This podcast is brought to you in part by Choice Realty Connect.com. Whether you're buying or selling a home, condo, or any type of property, trust Amanda to help match you with up to three top agents in your area. Choice Realty Connect.com. Hey, all you rock stars from Washington, D.C. This is the Market Money Podcast, episode 146. Time to talk about saving, investing, and protecting all those hard earned monies. We're here to coach you along that path to retirement and financial independence. I'm Craig, your certified master financial coach, along with Amanda. She is a corporate in house lawyer and real estate referral agent. And we're grateful you've joined us. Check us out at facebook.com slash rock on the money or the website at rock on the money.com. Hi. Hi. How is everything going with you? Uh, pretty good here. Yeah, it's finally turning into the time of year where it's nice to be in Florida. You know, you can walk out the door and it's not super humid and the temperatures are in the 70s. Nice. Yeah. One thing that I've been telling my my gaming stream, because I stream seven days a week live on Facebook Gaming, Rockland USA, is I've been telling people since July to do their Christmas shopping. Yeah. We're now into that time of year. It's now November. And what I've been trying to tell people to do is, guys, I need you to do your Christmas shopping. People thought I was nuts. I was ridiculed for that. I mm-hmm. said, guys, there's ships sitting out there in the ocean. 65, this is in July. Yeah. Everyone ignored me. I said, guys, I'm telling you, there's nothing to be on the shelves. Yeah. Now, we have a president trying to come up with a plan to save Christmas. And <laughs> they're now they're going to bring in the National Guard. I mean, as, and now people are saying, hey, I went to go buy this. It's now show. Well, like, where, where have you guys been? This has been going on for months, months. I think it's good. I think people might be forced to actually buy less crap that they don't need. <laughs> that was the point of this. Well, I think this is a great opportunity this year for people to think about being creative with gifts, with either, you know, making something that's meaningful or upcycling something. I'll tell you who's... N- whose shelves aren't empty and that's like thrift shops or consignment shops. You can find some really great like new things with tags on them still that have been donated even that. And some of them have been donated by the manufacturers. Mm, (laughs) They're dumping product. They're dumping product. So, I mean, you can find some great things there or things that are secondhand that aren't then going into a landfill and destroying our planet. Um, or you can gift experiences, you know, this is a year where we can be less about putting so much trash, cheap China produced plastic into the landfills and into the oceans. There you go. That's my super green tree hugger soapbox for the day. <laughs> <laughs> and before we get into our questions for the day, uh, one other episode we, we probably need to bring back is the thing about gift cards. Some gift cards are good, but a lot of these gift cards, depending on what you buy, you need to be careful because they expire after one year and billions and billions of dollars of gift cards go unused every year. The point is cash is king. I would Unless never you're mailing it. Then right, I, would I, send I was it. just going to say, it. don't mail cash. Don't mail but cash. You can always, well, Venmo is not very sexy on Christmas or, or <laughs> but, but the point is if you, if you're seeing, you know, if you have family there, you know, you can, you're exchanging gifts. There's nothing wrong with, with giving cash. Cause trust me, I've done it and I've seen the eyes light up because now they are not forced to use a gift card at a certain store or whatever. They can do whatever they want with cash. Yeah. It still that's works. the thing is when you get a gift card, it's, it's nice, but it means you have to go there and you're going to have to come out of pocket because you're going to spend more than what the gift card amount is. Especially as so restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. You're forced to go somewhere and then you spend your own money. So yeah, cash is always better. If you think about restaurants, push them really hard. Like if you go to Applebee's or these places, they mm-hmm. give you a $10 bonus if you buy it. Because these are what they know. They know science shows that someone's getting a $50 gift card. Two people go to dinner. They go to Applebee's. They know they want to use the whole thing. Well, they're going to go above that. And they right. know that they're actually making more money and the chances yep. are they're not going to use it. It's either going to go unused or it's an upsell. Of course, they're pushing gift cards. Everybody exactly. does. So, exactly. All right. Question one here. Go ahead. I know we're supposed to save 15% of our monthly income as baby step four. My husband and I were both previously teachers. So we got 26.7% of our highest salary once we turned 65. 
We're now in different careers. My employer matches 3%, so that's what I'm investing now. With all that in mind, do we still need to save 15% for baby step four? Obviously, the more the better, but we also have three children and don't want to wait too long for baby step five. Baby step five, by the way, is saving for your children's retirement. Just so we uh, Not retirement, things- school. A uh, School, I'm sorry, for school. And baby step four is a uh, saving for retirement, so... Um, yeah, and and but aren't four, five, and six meant to be done at the same time? Absolutely. And between you and I, we we don't believe as much about baby step five as yeah. we do about four and six. Which six is paying off your mortgage, and and four is taking care of you. Yes. So that, I, I would I would yeah. definitely put baby step five as a back burner issue. You don't know your kids are going to go to school. You don't know that they're going to stay in college. And then that money is just sitting there and you don't know what to do with it. But you could definitely make better use of it by putting it towards your own retirement. And like, I commend you for taking advantage of the match. I would not consider the the teacher's pension as an absolute it's in the bag. Mm. And, and Craig, you can talk more about this, but pension funds going broke and not paying out, yeah. right? I'm, a, I'm against I'm against that because I'm a retired firefighter. I get a pension. And I personally don't count on that pension 20 years from now. I treat it almost like so scary. It's, I'm fortunate to have it, but when I saved money, even in my, I ignored that. I said, okay, that's good. And I have it, but I saved on top of that as 15% or more the whole entire time. And that is my, on my backup. They could take my pension away today and I'm still good. So I can sit back and say, I'm fine. So I've done that. So if you are fortunate to have a pension, which less than 5% of Americans actually have one, you should be grateful, but don't count on it. Many people are losing their pensions every day. Just Google it. Yes. It's not pension guaranteed. Pension funds go bankrupt all the time. Um, and you're taking advantage of the match and that's great, but matches can also disappear. Companies can decide uh, on the turn of a, a heel that, you know what, um, it's a pandemic and we can't afford company matches anymore so we're we're not offering them and that, they can decide that like snap of a finger icing on the cake and many companies stopped doing that during the pandemic they can't yeah. afford it so it's icing on the cake so oh. do what you can control you can't control your employers you can't control pensions any of that stuff do what you can control i can save 15 percent, amanda i can yeah. put that into an s&p 500 index fund and at least double that money every eight to 10 years. That's what right. I can control. The other yeah. stuff, I can't. Right. So, and it, you're going to kick yourself when your kids get older and, well, maybe they decide not to go to college and you have that money and it barely grew in a 529 and you could have had, now you've lost so many years of retirement growth. It's That's ca- just my personal opinion. But no, it, it, it's like I say, we have a lot of flight attendants and listen to this and you know, airline employees, it's like a mask. You got to put your mask on first before you help someone next to you. If you don't take care of your retirement, you're not going to be able to help with a college. So what? They get now a college education, but now you're eating dog food. That makes yeah. a lot of sense for the rest of your <laughs> life. And you're still working for, while well, they're, they're getting this great job from their um, degree. And now you're sitting there working as a Walmart greeter till you're 80 years old. Yeah. That sounds like great plan. Yeah. I'm not in, I'm not in nope. on that. All right. Question two. I work 12 hour rotating shifts as an IT analyst at our local hospital, but I'm looking for a side hustle to help myself become a little more gazelle intense. Any ideas for something I could do from home on my days off or at nights after the kids are in bed, trying to make as little, take as little time away from them as possible. This is easy. The guy's an IT guy. Mm -hmm. He's got a computer. He's got the internet. Mm -hmm. You know how many things he can do right now? He could do, um, coaching, uh, he can do IT, uh, like computer, um, tutoring, stuff like that, or a one-on-one. A lot of people do that stuff over, yep. uh, zoom. He can make create courses. U- Udemy courses. Oh man. I mean, he's got the, all the IT knowledge. He could teach anything. He can make videos on YouTube and, and make ad money from that by teaching people how to use a computer, all kinds of things. I mean, it requires a personality. You There's, can help with troubleshooting. Oh Yeah. If, I mean, if he knows how to do any coding, he could do gigs that you can find on like what Fiverr. Oh yeah, you can write. Yeah, actually, he can do IT repair on Fiverr as well. There's a lot of categories yeah. for that as well. And you set your prices wherever the market will bear. 
But you, you're an IT guy. You already know the uh, technology. If you have the internet, which I'm sure you do, everybody pretty much does now. You, the internet's there. You do it after hours. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, and even on breaks when you're you're at work, you can still check your phone and and keep up on emails and and stuff like that. And but just save your video uh, conferences and stuff like that and do on the week. Now it's a lot of weekends, so you have to balance that with your kids and your family and talk to your family and, and see how you can budget that time so you don't ignore them. Uh, but other than that, uh, your IT. Yeah, Aaron, that's probably not totally different from you checking out, watching football all day Saturday, uh, you know, college football day or football all day Sunday. I, I, I know so many people that that's how they spend their weekend and like and kids go play and they just sit and watch TV all weekend. So what's the difference between doing that and actually earning some sitting in, in front of a computer earning income as a side hustle? So the people that, that ignore that, I mean, you can take time for yourself, but yeah. if you're going to sit there all weekend in your pajamas watching Netflix when you could have done something side gig and make a lot of money. Uh, yeah, you can still sit in your pajamas in front of your computer instead of in front of your TV. Hell, I'm sitting here in my pajamas right now while I'm recording a podcast. Not me. I already went and worked out and showered and I'm in real close. Oh, um, well, that's <laughs> not hot at all. All right, let's take a break right now. We'll be back with more Talk of the Money. there rock stars amanda here with choice realty connect.com are you about to sell your home or excited to buy your first or next home i'll be honored to help you find an expert to work with you in your local area at choice realty connect.com i'll help match you with up to three qualified licensed agents that specialize in your specific market Choice Realty Connect serves every zip code in all 50 states with a network of 15,000 top rated agents that are ranked within the top 5% for sales. Whether you're selling or looking for a condo, new construction, retreat, vacation property, or you're a first time home buyer, let me connect you with the perfect top agent today. ChoiceRealtyConnect.com. The choice is yours. Amanda Braun is a Florida licensed real estate with a brokerage Realty Connect. Rockland, USA. Hey, welcome back to Rock of the Money. I'm Craig with Amanda. We're so fortunate to have you, Amanda. You are a real estate referral agent expert. Yes. How is the, how are the housing markets doing out there? What's going you on? You know, um, I don't think it's as crazy as it was six to nine months ago, but it's still crazy. It's saying, just things are kind of leveling off rather than st- continuing to skyrocket. Nice. Are there? Are you think prices will come down a little bit or... Anything, or are we just going to level think, off? I don't think noticeably, no. But that's just me guessing. There's, they're building houses all around me like crazy. I mean, they can't keep up. They can't keep the The demand is still high. The supply is still low. So I don't yeah. think prices are coming down anytime soon. I mean, the D.C. market's always been hot. You know that. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. they, people just move here for jobs and income stability. It's always been known to be kind of recession, not resistant, but... Not as impacted because the federal government's here. Yeah. It's always open, but yeah. So people move here. From Until all the over. government goes on shutdown because they can't come oh my God. on a budget. But yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> it's weird living here. I can't wait to move out of here. I still love it here though. I do. Um, question number three. Can you read this? Sure. It says, I currently make $71,500 a year gross income. However, this year, my bonus, I'll make $76,000 gross. But I started working in June of this year. I picked up a second job waiting tables part time. How will the second income impact my taxes and whatnot? I just graduated university. So this will be my first year filing taxes for having a full time job. I think this is one of those cases people start worrying about tax brackets. Yeah. Yeah. A- am I reading that wrong? Because, I think you're probably right. Like, yeah. go earn your money and worry about that later. Many Americans, and I'm saying many, because I hear this over and over, people worry about making too much money, which boggles me. And what that comes back to is, I don't know where this started from. I think it's political in some sense. 
People think that if you end up in a higher tax bracket, all of your income is in that higher percentage. And that is not how it works. No. And I don't know where this came from. We have a progressive tax system. Only the money that you made it above that level is taxed at that rate, not all the below. So it's not a bad deal to make more money. You want to win. So keep making your money. Don't worry about it. People right. put too much thought into this. You want to make as much money as you can and take as much money as you can and put it away and start investing that money in like yeah. compound and Roth. And so he's already in as a single individual. I'm assuming he's single. He's already in what's called the 22% tax bracket rate, which means that all the money he makes above $40,525 is taxed at 22%. Anything lower than that is taxed at the 10 or 12% range. Um, so until he hits $86,375, there's no change in tax bracket. Like if he makes $86,376, then $1 would be taxed at 24%. <laughs> exactly. And the rest of it would be at the 22% range, you know, down to 40,000. And then that that's only at 12%. So again, I would take an extra 86 or, you know, 76 cents versus no money. There you go. And then, <laughs> and then in terms of other taxes, I mean, the only other change it's going to make is now you have to make sure you collect a W-2 for multiple jobs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before you file your taxes. I have that situation. So, or I did. <laughs> I did. I don't well, you know. Will. I you don't. will for the next tax year still. Yeah, I, st yeah. I have Facebook. Well, I have Facebook. Go now I have Google because I'm on YouTube now. Oh. I didn't tell you about that. I'm now a partner on, on YouTube. YouTube. No wonder I never hear from you anymore. I nice. collect partnerships. It's It's a great hobby. But it goes back to the IT guy. He can do the same thing. Yep. I'm live streaming. I'm making videos, tutorial videos, and it works. It's a lot of work, though, Amanda. It is. Yeah, you I've work never, a lot of hours. People don't understand because people make fun of, like, gamers. And, let me tell you something. I've never worked this hard in my life. Mm -hmm. It's hours, guys. If you took down the hours and break it down into how much you make, it, it's a, I'd make more money if I'd worked just... All these jobs are out there fully available. I'd make more just doing that. I just yeah. would not be as happy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, question number four. I'll read this one short. I'm trying okay. to, just so people know, I'm having Amanda read these questions because I stream so much on Facebook and YouTube. I'm trying, my voice is pretty rough. <laughs> it's not that sexy voice I used to have. Mm. It, it used to be sexy at one point. I don't know when it was, but I'm believing it was. All right, question number four. Is it a good idea to use my emergency fund to pay off the last of my credit card debt? It's my last debt before I'm done with baby step two and I'm just ready to get over with it. Um, so it depends. It, I, when you say your emergency fund, hopefully since you're in baby step number two, you mean you only have a $1,000 emergency fund, in which case I would say no, that you need that in case an emergency comes up. And frankly, you, you're just doing a shell game by paying from one hand the emergency fund to pay off the debt, you then would have to refund your emergency fund. So the debt doesn't go away, it would just shift. So I would say if you have the just the basic baby step one emergency fund that we recommend of $1,000, then no, you're going to have to do it the hard way and get it up. If you made a mistake and put more in your emergency fund than $1,000, then whatever's in there above and beyond $1,000, I'd say yes, put it towards your credit card. There you go. Set. I'm going to let you. Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah, I know you're close and it gets ex exciting and tempting to pay it off, but you got to do the work. Get over the finish line. Over the finish line. Be done with it. Be done with it. Good that It'll you're be doing much the more satisfying. Steps. I promise. See, I they're looking at that number. You, mm -hmm. You've been there. You mm -hmm. see your goal. It's right there. It's like, yeah, we just do that. Oh, yeah. We're like one or two payments away from having one of our rental properties paid off. And then something keeps coming up. So <laughs> that's going to be frustrating. Yeah. So I keep thinking, OK, this is the month and it'll be paid off. And then it's uh, it's very close. Nice. All right. Well, thank you, Amanda. You can find Amanda on Instagram and Twitter at Agile Amanda. And you can find me on all of your favorite social media platforms at Rockland USA. 
Don't forget to check out the website and subscribe to the podcast. All the links are right there on the front page, rockonthemoney.com. Please subscribe and leave comments to our podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, or even your favorite app that you got right there on your phone. Those help us out a lot. If you're ever looking for a specific topic or content that we've produced over time, just go to the website and in the search bar, just type in your topic, be it 401k, stimulus check, or anything, and everything comes right up for you. We have so much gratitude that you've taken the time out of your day to listen to our podcast while you're walking, driving, traveling, or whatever you're doing. Please send us an email. Let us know how you're doing out there. Podcast at rocklandusa.com. So long, everybody. Thank you very much again. We'll see you again next time. All opinions expressed by the host are solely their own and do not reflect the views of any company, affiliates, or advertisers. Investments or strategies mentioned in the show may not be suitable for you. Before acting on any information in the show, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular circumstances and strongly consider seeking advice from your own financial or investment advisor.